Hi, Jay. How are you? Good. How are you? Thanks. Good. I, I popped on all my uh, my props just for you because I know you're the Boston guy, the Boston sports guy. So I've got Patriots, oh, look at that. Yeah, Red yeah. Sox for you. Uh, I was hoping to get Bruins and Celtics to complete the look. God, I got my Bruins uh, screensaver there. Oh, there you go. I think the best team in the league right now. So They uh, are. Where are you? Uh, Toronto, but oh, yeah. I have a lot of Boston relatives. So are you? Yeah, I mean, we are. It's 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 historic right now. But there's also the New Jersey Devils won't go away. That's like, right. Who yeah. knew? Yeah. Uh, the team that last year was like the worst in the league, and they didn't. Yeah, no, their players and, must have matured at the right time. And what's interesting about the Vegas Knights is that the reason I think they're having success is they have our old coach, and the reason that we're having our success is that we don't have our old coach. Exactly. <laughs> the, the fit has to be there. Look, you, you've led me right into what I want to ask you about, which is SWAT with the fit. Um, you know, I've been watching a lot. I watch a lot before. I've been watching a lot to prep. Um, it seems like um, Deacon, there, there's a style. Everyone has a style, you know, a leadership style. Um, uh, there's a there's really a, a renewed focus on family and on how everyone gets along. You know, you're not like your character. Your character is, you know, a man of faith. Uh, four kids really, you know, uses, um, I like the speech about how sort of each kid, ha you have to find the right style. What would you say in general is your style, your leadership style, your integration style, you know, how you get along so well? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think I'm very, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lot like my character just in, in <clears throat> you know, kind of, Quiet, lead by being by by showing and you know not not saying you know I don't want to say quiet but just lead by example um, and I've always been that way that's how my I was raised I think so um, so yeah I mean I, I I think sometimes they they write not too far off from what you are and it, it helps um, when you're trying to bring something and make it real I mean I don't have four you know I don't have four kids <laughs> I'm not married so. There's the difference there, but I can understand. I was, I had, I had two brothers. I have two brothers, so I can imagine what it's like. How my dad spoke to us. So you'll, there, there'll be an episode coming up with my son, and he gets into a little bit of trouble. And, and it's, you know, how do you apply that? How do you apply giving a kid advice when you don't have kids? Well, I mean, I was given advice, so I can, I can, I can figure it out. Yeah. Um. You know, how does that reflect in terms of? We've had a chance to talk um, many times with Shamar. And, you know, uh, he always says that leadership starts at the top, you know, and he leads by uh, example. You know, I'm watching what's going on. Um, you know, Deacon was sort of the only person up to this point who had kids on the team. And now you're seeing that Hondo, you know, that has a kid on the way. There really seems to be what I've noticed is it's a growing process and a maturation process, you know, the way that the team gets along and you know interacts and and it really reflects in the storylines so you know how have you felt that over the course of now six seasons oh it's it's remarkable to have have that happen at all first of all it's six seasons but um yeah to to have these moments in the you know when when you get now you got hondo asking me advice about things and mm -hmm. um you'll see david trying to figure some stuff out with with his wife and and uh, it's so funny that <laughs> Shamar and I joked because he kept he, he had another question hey Deacon you got a second and he's asking me about his stuff with with Michelle then it's about his kids and we were joking I'm like hey Hondo can you just stop give me a break like I'm, I'm on break here you keep you always come up to me and ask me for advice but but I love it it's that he, he's now coming to me for the fatherly stuff and, mm -hmm. uh, you know it's it's a fun dynamic to play when we're used to just it's not just about jumping out of the truck and running after the bad guys um because we're getting kind of old for that yeah yeah um this season in particular you know i've been watching everything but this season in particular has been really interesting um you know when you're premier to go to thailand and on your show of course you don't just pretend to go to right. thailand you don't just fake you actually went and it just feels like the production is getting uh, 
it already was, but it's getting bigger and bigger. There's so many big moments, big set pieces, big, and all of it, you know, very real. What have been some of your favorite moments? Yeah, I mean, th- certainly Thailand. Um, we actually just shot uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, right before Thanksgiving, we were downtown LA, right near the Staples Center and all that. And and it was a Saturday, so it wasn't quite as busy, but we shut, you know, we shut down a whole city block. And just to have, you know, the, the city of LA be a character for us is so important. Um, oftentimes we do, you know, you're, you're saying about how we actually shoot in Thailand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oftentimes here we we have to find little neighborhoods and places that aren't necessarily in LA to shoot um, because of just navigating, you know, thousand trucks and all that. But we were actually downtown for this entire episode all over. And it was, it really brought up a, a, another sense of, wow, that's, we got to, we can't forget that a, one of the characters that's not, in the credits is this city. So you'll see, you know, it, it's, it's the visual that that's really important for our show. Yeah. And I have been noticing that too, you know, even in LA, you have to, you have to film it in yeah. places that are, um, that really fit, you know, you can't, you can't do it on a sound stage or whatever. And then it, you know, you have to kind of fix it up. Yeah. So how does that feel for you? You've talked a lot about the training and I've, I've read that, but you know, how does it feel to to shoot a show like this that has to be authentic at all times? That's so it's um it's actually kind of a great thing to have because it keeps you very grounded in in what you're doing for your character and for your performance is that you know, as you mentioned, to be able to call on the fact that I have children, that dictates every decision that I make. Um, and I get that as an advantage over the other characters is when they're talking about um well, you know, you're not wearing a vest in this scene because you're gone. I'm like, no, no, I've, my character has been shot. I'm wearing a vest. I have four kids. And then the technical advisor will look at me and he'll be like, I, exactly. I said you'd wear a vest, but they don't, you know, so it's like we, that becomes very important to me is the authenticity of, um, of, of what real officers do. And, and I get all the time and whether it's in where I live in Santa Monica or, um, other cities where police officers will come up and say thank you um, for for telling the stories, but also they're like, you guys look like you're doing it correctly, and that make, that means a lot to them. Mm-hmm. I also heard that you were talking about how the payoff, you know, even in your pilot, how Deacon sort of was like the next in line and then passed over, that that pays off, you know, many seasons later with another plot line, a callback to it. You know, what was what was that um, episode? like to play for you when you oh, yeah sort of... I mean are you, are you speaking about this season or are you talking about well you had the one in which you know um you know where where you were dealing with Duke and mental health with, oh yeah yeah with and, Buck yeah yeah with Buck and also uh sorry and with um this season too I mean really it it does feel like it it connects there's that connective tissue that calls you back right to the beginning it's important and I and you know in this this season when I think that I've accidentally shot a, an innocent um, bystander at, at a crime scene. I mean, that I I was adamant to them to say you we cannot gloss over the importance of this moment. If in fact, you know, we we will find out shortly that I, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. But until then, you we cannot step away from the weight of that situation. Um, just remember how it affected Buck when, when and he didn't even she didn't uh, the little boy in that situation in the pilot he didn't die. This woman is laying there dead. I think I might have killed her. So we have to address that. And they and it was and the director and the writer, we all got together and it was made me really happy that we, we, we touched on it, but we didn't overdo it. Um, and that's important. On a completely different note, I saw that you did the um, reunion, the sort of the Zoom, re- as, as many people were doing for Better Off Ted, that you had the, the 10th anniversary, everyone coming back. That show really felt like, I don't know if you feel the same way, felt like it was so ahead of its time it in was. terms of. I've watched, you know, I rewatched it because of that, is that what you speak of, and it holds up um, today. I mean, it's, and I have people all the time, just this weekend, I had a, a couple at a restaurant that came over on their way out to say, and I was, I could see that they're about to say, you know, something, but they said, we really enjoyed you on Better Off Ted. 
And I was like, oh, thanks. And they said, also, we love we love SWAT, but but we just wanted to tell you that that was our that was our favorite show. So I know it I know it had a lot more success um, in death than it did when it lived. But hey, I we, I think we could always come back and do another. I'd like to do one in person, to be honest. But yeah, oh, an in person reunion, yeah. Well, it just seems like you found those projects that really either you know ten years later or right at the time have hit with people. And I think that's yeah. really incredible when I look through your body of work. Well, thank you. And I've really appreciated hearing from you and and I do wish you the best. And, you know, all, obviously the teams as well. Too. Yes, that's right. <laughs> all of the Boston teams, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show my support to them. Well, I appreciate that, yeah. For you as well. But I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jay. All right. Thank you, sir.